This is my entry into the 2017-2018 Big Bang competition. Um, it's called the Plybot. It's intended to be the cheapest 3D printer ever. It's also intended to be flat pack um, and easy to manufacture. They're the main three things about it. To give you a quick overview, this is the frame. It's made out of CNC milled 6 mil plywood. I milled it on my CNC router that I built a couple of years ago. Um, it's completely snapped together. So first you get the base, then you get these two triangle bits. Um, and then you slide, slide them into the base. They've got notches on. Um, oh, they also double as feet, by the way. Um, and then you get these two bits, which, as you can see, they've got a separation there. Um, you put them on like that, and then you snap them together. Um, and then this latch locks them in. It's got a latch on both sides. You can't see that side. But, um, but yeah, that's the frame. Um, oh, it's also got these bits of angle iron, as you can see, these bits, um, which make it more rigid. But these also double as the Z-axis linear rails. Um, as you can see, there's a bear in there, a bear in there, and also on this side, you can see right down there, there's a bear in there, and a bear in there, which ride on these rails. <coughs> um, so moving on to the Z-axis. The Z-Axi uses a NEMA 17-step motor, like all the axes, they're, they're all NEMA 17-step motors. Um, that's encased inside the Z-Axi, which has a piece of vinyl tubing, which has a notch cut in it, and then the f then this fishing line, I don't know if you can see, that fishing line um, threads through through that notch, and then the vinyl tubing, as the step motor turns, it winds up that, um, that, um, that fishing line. Um, then as it winds it up, it moves it upwards. Then the fishing line goes through that bearing, it goes through these two bearings and up. You can see there it attaches to this to these two bolts. Um, <coughs> which yeah, which creates the motion. Um, when that's when that's turned. Um, oh it just moved up then, we've seen it. Um, wait, you might be able to see it move a little bit. Then it just moved, but yeah, you probably can't see that. Um, and then it has these these bolts put it together. Um, it's interlocking, as you can see. Um, and then these also double as the as the holder for the bed, because the bed, as you see, the bed attaches onto there, and which makes it adjustable. So you can tighten or loosen these and move it up and down um, to level the bed. Um, as you can see, it's not wasn't perfectly level, so that just compensated for it. Moving on, this is the XY axis. Um, it's held in place by these these acrylic mounts. These, you first, what you do is you take the acrylic mounts on their own, insert them through there. As you can see, they lock in. They lock in place. Let me get the focus. So they lock in place, and then you put the the um, bearings in, and then that really locks it in in place, keeps it solid. Um, then these are just M8 threaded rod which goes through there through the bottom one um, and then keeps this keeps this rotating there um, it's powered by these stepper motors you can see there's one there one there I'm going to sort this wiring out it's just I just need to re, re laser cut these um, um, and then these stepper motors have a pulley on you can see um, which powers this timing belt um, through these pulleys um, and then, in effect, controls this angle, and this step motor controls this angle. Um, and then I had to modify the firmware a bit and do the maths to control all this. Um, then, yeah, in effect, you can get that to control this in the XY axis. Um, because obviously, you can't, you have to edit the firmware, otherwise, because it doesn't move proportionally, it doesn't move like like an XY system would. So, you got to change it to account for, a, for the XY, XY plane. Um, yeah, um, and then this this is a hot end. This was just bought um, off eBay, um, and then see it's now printing. Um, this is the extruder, um, as you can see, it, it's fallen off. This it's just keeps slipping out. Just need to re recut that because it was too short. That, those were too close together. They need to be exp expanded out a bit. Um, and then there, there is this little. Thing there. So yeah, oh, yeah. This thing here, there's a spring there, um, and which tensions, and then a pivot there, which tensions that bearing against 
um, the 1.75mm filament um, which pushes against that, that pulley which is attached to the step motor. Um, it then pushes that through this 2mm inside the amateur Teflon tube. It goes all the way around and into the hot end which is where it is then melted. Um, it also has got a cleaner on there and I haven't sorted out how to figure out where to mount that. I'm going to try and mount it in the yeah, so the upcoming changes. I'm going to mount this in here at the, um, there. Um, and then I'm going to move this electronics up into here into the z-axis. Um, oh, the electronics. Forgot about that. Um, this is this is a Arduino uh, Mega. Oh, that's the z-axis moving down. As you can see, it's just finished that print. Good timing. Then there's there's a small gear that you can attach to a 5mm shaft and then it gives you a GT2 pulley. Off. Um, this is electronics. I said that there's an Arduino Mega with a Ramps 1.4 board that was just bought off eBay because it's, it's the cheapest you can get. There's no point in creating your own because it's, it's already made in China for half the price of what you can make it for. That's just a regular uh, 12 volt 5 amp power supply. Um, this wiring, these two wires, were meant to go through through the there, I don't know if you can see, there are two two holes, they look like mouse mouse holes I don't know, it's probably a better way to describe it and um, they were meant to go through there but when I was assembling yeah, I forgot to do that so yeah, so this this will be a bit tidier um, um, and yeah, also I'm planning on making this frame out of 6mm ply instead of 12mm to make this whole thing out of 6mm ply so it'll be much easier to, to manufacture um, as this has to be seen to routed, um, it's pretty difficult to laser cut six, uh, 12 mil. So, um, so then if I did, it would be all laser cut like this is. Like this is laser cut. That's seen to routed, and that's seen to routed. Um, so yeah, that's it. The little thing. There's the wiring. As you can see, it goes through, through there, and it's zip tied to the to there, and goes through through that hole there, and then it attaches. Then it goes through. There's a hole in the bottom right corner there, the bottom right corner there, which you can't see either. Uh, then yeah, it goes through and attaches to the, and connects to the ramps 1.4 board. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, that's a quick overview of my machine. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, here's a few printed parts. Um, this is a this is a benchy. This is a torture test. Um, Um, as you can see, it did printed printed fine. Um, yeah, that's a torch test. These are three gears. Um, there's a small, there's a little um, uh, fan mount for the extruder. Uh, there's a whistle. Um, then here's a his little vase. Pretty fragile. Um, and yeah, all oh, this is the software that I use. It's called Pronterface. Um, yeah, that's, that's not really too relevant, but, but yeah, that's the machine.